Hey, good morning, Northlake family. My name is Chris, and I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our worship time this morning. Hope you're doing well, and thanks so much for joining us. Let us know you're here. Drop your name down in the comments and say hello, and go ahead and let us know if there's anything we can be praying about also on your behalf. So today we continue in our four-week-long series of Advent. So this morning we'll kick things off with a congregational prayer led by one of our elders, Stuart Smith. Then we'll sing a few songs together. And then the Hootenin family will lead our next candle lighting as we reflect on the Advent theme of love during today's worship. Um, after that, Ike Reeser, our preaching minister, will share some teaching he's prepared for us. And then the Bradshaw family will lead our communion time together. So thank you again so much for joining us this morning for worship. Uh, join me now as we begin. Come the long expected Jesus. Hi, this is Stuart Smith, one of the elders here at North Lake Church. Hope you and your family are doing well. I miss seeing so many of you and look forward to the day when we'll be reunited together. Before I lead us in prayer, I'd wanted to share a thought. I recently watched a documentary about Fred Rogers, known better as Mr. Rogers, from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The story of his life was interesting. As a young man in seminary, he decided early on that he wanted to devote his ministerial life to children through the new platform of television. He said that one of his guiding principles through this was instruction that his mother had given him, that in all times in life, especially when things were difficult, to look for the people who are helping. And certainly, he lived that out in, in his life as he helped children through many difficult struggles that come along the way. I was thinking about that as we reflect on 2020, where the headlines have been bad day in and day out, it seems. Yet, as we look at that, there are also things that give us hope when we see those people who are in there helping, medical workers who are risking their own lives, serving others, people handing out food to those in need. And time and time again, where communities rally around to help others. I think this gives us hope as we look ahead to 2021 and know that no matter what, what lies ahead, there will always be those who are helping others as we are called to help others through Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Father, we praise your name above all others, thanking you for the many blessings we have in life, most importantly for your Son Jesus, in whom we have salvation. Father, in this year there's that has been so hard for so many people. We pray for healing for those that are battling illnesses, for strength and courage for those that are ministering to them, for peace and comfort for their family and friends as they go through uncertain days. Lord, please watch over those that are going through financial difficulties, those who have lost their jobs, we know that there are many who face the possibility of losing their homes because of these struggles. The way forward seems uncertain for them. Open our eyes and tune our hearts to those situations around us where we can bring compassion and aid to those in need and show Christ to them. Continue to watch over the North Lake family let us find ways to stay united to one another as we are united in Christ. Father, in this Advent season, as we remember the coming of Jesus, 
Let us remember that you are the God of promises who has a plan for his people in all times. Whether it's a time of joy or sorrow, we know that you are over all and that your spirit is here among us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. the birth of Christ here in our home, and we have the opportunity to um, meditate on this, and, and the theme as we go through this week is the theme of love. So we invite you to join us as we are anticipating the birth of Christ, and we dwell on the time of Mary, the time of Joseph, and the time of um, God preparing them and preparing for Jesus' coming. So now we will have a reading from 1 John 4. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who, know, who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an untimely sacrifice for 
our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved the world, loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we, live, we, we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet he hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So now we will light the candles of Advent. second week. And now, as we're in the theme of love, week three. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for another day of life and thank you for all that you provided us with. Please help us be more loving people and trust in you and follow you, even when we feel that we should go another way. Dear God, thank you. thank you for sending down your son. And I to pray your name. Amen. 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 All right. Have a great week. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>
In the first chapter of Luke, everybody's so excited they can't keep quiet. John the Baptist is kicking and dancing in utero. His mother Elizabeth is shouting so loud the neighbors can hear her next door. And Mary, the mother-to-be of Jesus, breaks into song. Uh, Well, this is a beautiful time of year for songs, and there are many beautiful songs. And there's one popular song that you hear this time of year that many people like, Mary, Did You Know?, Uh, it's filled with these nice thoughts. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? Did you know the child you've delivered will soon deliver you? Uh, You know that song. It's filled with just poignant and beautiful thoughts. No wonder we like it so much. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think? Did Mary know? Listen to her song from Luke. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he's been mindful of the humble state of his servant. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He's performed mighty deeds with his arm. He's scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He's brought down rulers from their thrones. But he's lifted up the humble, and he's filled the hungry with good things. The rich he sent away empty. He's helped his servant Israel, 
remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. So what do you think? Did Mary know? I think so. It sounds like Mary's been waiting for this her whole life. Sometimes we imagine Mary as a shy teenage girl, uh, so bewildered by what's happening uh, around her that she's willing, but she's kind of clueless. Well, I've been around too many church kids to know, don't underestimate them because they're going to believe what you teach them. And that's when it really gets dangerous. And if you listen to Mary's song, you realize it's way more likely when the angel finished his speech, she said, all right, what took you so long? You see, God chose Mary, not just because she was a willing participant, but because this was what she'd been hoping and praying for all along. She'd been trusting God was going to send a deliverer and bring the kind of just and peaceful world God had always promised. She was ready to go. And this is what she wanted more than anything else. Now, of course, it didn't all happen exactly the way she thought it would. Later in the gospel, we're going to see Mary didn't anticipate all the twists and turns or the extent of how what she'd hoped for is going to be realized. But her song shows She had a deep and abiding faith that God would someday make good on all God's promises. She believed it so much. In her song, she sang about everything that she was hoping God would do in the future as if it had already happened. He has performed mighty deeds. He's scattered those who are proud. He's brought down rulers. He's lifted up the humble. He's filled the hungry and sent the rich away empty. You see, in Mary's mind, it was good as done. And that's not because they were her ideas. It's because they were God's ideas. Listen to how her song resonates with passages from the Jewish scriptures, like Isaiah 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. With righteousness, he'll judge the needy. With justice, he'll give decisions for the poor. With the breath of his lips, he'll slay the wicked. The wolf will live with the lamb. All the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, and the nations will rally to him. You see, Mary's tuned in to the pain in the world, and she's also attuned to what God has promised. She believes that in what God is doing and and doing underneath all the mess and the chaos in the world. You have to have a certain set of eyes and ears, I think, to sing a song like this. But Mary, uh, Mary could sing that song. Well, this is a season for Christmas songs, and I think we've all been listening to them, and everybody's got their favorites. Uh, One person I like is Whitney Houston. Uh, I think she's a wonderful singer. But some people will tell you, you know, if you like Whitney, you should hear Aretha. Well, Aretha's awesome, too. But I've heard even older people say, if you think Aretha is something, you need to listen to Mahalia. So recently I went down the YouTube rabbit hole of Mahalia Jackson videos. And I understand why the Grammys years ago invented the category of gospel music just so they could give her an award. She's amazing. And all she wanted to sing was gospel. Here's a little listen. The mountain Just give me strength To climb Lord, don't move Leave Be your 
Mahalia Jackson was born in 1911 in New Orleans in a part of the city known today as the Black Pearl neighborhood. But at that time, it was referred to with a derogatory slang term that was once too common in southern towns and cities. You see, she knew what it was like to be treated with contempt and to be at the mercy of people who thought they had something over her. And she channeled all that pain into her songs, and I think you can see it on the videos and hear it in her voice. And she coupled that with a deep hope in God's mercy and justice. Eventually, she became an international celebrity, singing all over the U.S. and over Europe. And at the height of her career, in 1956, she met 27-year-old Martin Luther King Jr. and his friend and co-worker, Ralph Abernathy, at the National Baptist Convention. A few months later, they invited her to Montgomery during the bus boycott to sing at a rally. She said yes to them, and, and she sang at a December concert there in Montgomery. Right after the concert, she went to Abernathy's home uh, to find that it had been bombed while she'd been singing. Well, after this, Mahalia became more and more involved in the civil rights movement. With some people, this, this hurt her image. Of course, it hurt sales. She even received death threats. But whenever King called on her, she never refused, traveling with him to the deepest parts of the segregated South. Her voice, one person has said, became the soundtrack of the civil rights movement. And Mahalia was on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial during the March on Washington. Everybody remembers MLK's speech that day, but before King spoke, Mahalia sang. During her song, a helicopter started hovering close overhead, and they said that she just looked up at it and then out sang the helicopter. And Mahalia was there as King was speaking. And as he was reading from his prepared remarks, you can finally hear her call out, Tell them about the dream, Martin. King looks over at Mahalia, slides his papers to the side of the lectern, and that's where the I have a dream speech comes from. Another one of King's close friends who was there that day said that at that moment, it was as if some cosmic force came down and occupied his body. It was the same body, the same voice, but the voice had something I'd never heard before. You know, don't underestimate the power of a young person enthralled with God's dream. Before God put a baby in Mary's womb, God put a song in Mary's heart. She believed God's promises and God sent a deliverer for his people. Mary believed God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And she believed it so much she could sing it in the past tense. Yeah, there were going to be surprises for Mary in the story still to come. But don't we think there are going to be surprises for us too? You know, we think we've got it all figured out, just how God's going to do it all. Well, maybe what that really means is we don't believe God will finally do what God has promised. No, God will do it. And Mary's song wasn't just her own set of ideals. When her son Jesus preached his first sermon in his hometown of Nazareth, he read out loud from the scroll of that same prophet Isaiah. He read, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then you know how the story goes. He rolls up the scroll, sits down, and says, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. You better believe that Jesus knew Mary's song. Why did God choose a young woman like Mary to raise his son? Why does God choose us to carry on Jesus' work? Couldn't God snap his fingers and make all of this right? 
And we don't know the answers to those questions. But we do know we need to say yes to God's dream. You know, today there are young people who've been raised to believe what God has promised. And sometimes they find the church a little hard of hearing. There are also older people who believe the promises, but they've gotten tired of singing a song too few people seem to listen to. Just imagine this Advent season. If younger people, brimming with courage and hope, were joined with older folks filled with wisdom and faith, what would that be like? Wouldn't that, that would be like joining a Mary and an Elizabeth. You know, we might bring something new into the world again. So let's listen to their songs. They're singing about the dream. And may God continue to give us all kinds of people to sing those songs. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments of peace Where there is hatred We will sow his love Where there is injury We will never judge Where there is striving We will speak his peace To the peace instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments of Paige, Patrick, and Monica, thank you for joining us at the table. We gather around the table today during this season of Advent with the anticipation of joy. There could have been no life, death, and resurrection of our Savior without the birth of Jesus, our Redeemer. We see Mary in Luke 1 as the news is delivered that she, a virgin, would birth a child and being joyful is not her response. Nor would joy be her response when the same child that she birthed is crucified. However, joy eventually presents itself after Jesus's birth and his resurrection. 
How can it be in the midst of receiving unexpected news that joy should be our response? During moments of sadness and in the midst of despair, how can we be confident that there will be joy? Because God, the one we serve, the one we worship and praise and commune with, has a plan for each of us, and that continues to unfold here at the table where we remember Jesus' birth, his life, crucifixion, and resurrection. God has a plan for our lives, just as he did for Elizabeth, Zachariah, John the Baptist, Mary, and Joseph. As we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we do so with anticipated joy of the plan he has for your life and our birth into eternity to live with him forever. Will you play, pray over the bread with me? Father, we are grateful for anticipated joy as we experience life that is unpredictable and ever-changing, knowing that you have a plan for each of us. We eat this bread in remembrance and celebration of your birth, life, crucifixion, and resurrection. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me for the wine? God, our Father, without you we have nothing, but with you we have everything. Today, at this table, we acknowledge that you have a plan for our lives. As we drink from this cup, may we live with anticipated joy of being with you in eternity to die no more. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us at the table. Oh 
ਦਿੱਲੀ 